Okay, so here's another example of completing the square, but this one's a little tougher because I have a leading coefficient here. So in front of my x term, I actually have a number instead of one like in the last example. So like before, I'm gonna move the, um, the eight over to the other side. So I have three x squared minus six x, leave a space, equals negative eight. So all I did is move the eight over. Now over here, I'm gonna take out the three, the leading coefficient. I'm just gonna factor out the leading coefficient so I have 3x squared minus 2x equals negative 8. So just like before, I'm going to take half of this b term, the uh, coefficient in front of the x term. I'm going to take half of it and square it. So half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add a 1 right here. But in order to keep my two equations balanced, did I... Just add, do I want to add a 1 over here or something different? I actually want to add a 3 over here. Because if I were to foil this back out or distribute this 3 back out, can you see that on this side I change the value of this equation by 3 times 1, which is 3. So in order to keep the two equations equally balanced, you have to add the same amount to both sides. So on this side, even though I added a 1 inside the parentheses, I really added a total of 3 to the other side. So now, if you remember your factoring rules, sorry, that 3 is still outside. This trinomial inside factors nicely into x minus 1 times x minus 1, which is x minus 1 squared. Review your rules of factoring if you need a little help on that. And that's negative 5. So now I'm going to move that 3 over so I can divide both sides by 3. And I have x minus 1 on this side. And on this side I have negative 5 thirds. So now, because I have a square all by itself, I can square root both sides. Don't forget to add the plus and minus whenever you're the one that's square rooting both sides. It ha you have to consider the positive and negative, so it's plus and minus squared and negative 5 thirds. So this um, square and square root cancel each other out, so very nicely on this side I just have left x minus 1. On this side, I have square root of negative 5 thirds. So now I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I like to add it in the front, so it's going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 thirds. And all we have left to do is clean this up a little bit. This is a little ugly. So for those of you that know imaginary numbers, um, this, imagine, this uh, negative um, under the radical has to come out and it's an imaginary number. So I'm going to have 1 plus or minus i square root of 5 thirds. Now, if you recall, we don't want to leave square roots in the denominator. This 3 is under the square root, so that um, we want to rationalize that. So I'm going to have 1 plus or minus i. And if you remember, for square roots, it's really square root of 5 over the square root of 3. So I can go ahead and multiply that by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now, I have 1 plus or minus i root 15 on the top, and on the bottom, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. So you could leave your answer like this, or you could recall that 1 I could really write as 3 over 3, right? Anything over itself is just 1. So I could summarize this numerator by 3 plus or minus i root 15, and since they both have a common denominator of 3, I can just put it all over 3. And that's a nice way to write that answer.